Hello, my friends. My name is OMG WTF LOL FTW BRB. Welcome back to more Total Extreme Wrestling 2016. We are playing as the WWF in the year 2002, booking the invasion angle. And we are on the road to WrestleMania. We've got our Monday Night Raw edition. This is the, I guess, second Raw in the build to uh, WrestleMania. And uh, I like the way this uh, this turned out. I feel like you guys are just going to be a little shocked at some things that happened here tonight. Maybe not like super shocked, like, oh god, I never saw that coming. But like, I don't know, there's something regarding a specific superstar. In fact, it's like the opening angle, so we can just talk about it right away when he gets to it. But I feel like there's a certain direction with a certain superstar that you guys aren't going to see coming. But I'll be interested to see your guys' thoughts after this show and see if you guys uh, have any idea where this is heading. There we go. I was like, what the hell? Did I press the button? 43 solid D rating for our opening pre-show matchup here. An abysmal pre-show match. The one, Billy Gunn, goes over Lance Cade, one of our developmental talents. Figured I'd give him a shot here tonight. In 5 minutes, 51 seconds with the Famouser. Billy Gunn with a 47. Lance K with a 27. So, nothing really too impressive with Lance K, but nothing really, nothing not impressive. I mean, I've seen worse. Billy needs to improve, though. <laughs> but its popularity has an effect, though, as well. Billy Gunn is improving in performance. I have to look at Billy's popularity, though, and just see how much of a difference he has in that all right so uh, our opening segment of the night gets a 100 a star rating here monday night raw opens up with the owner of wcw shane mcmahon already in the ring alongside a handful of wc w talent of course you know booker t and the steiners from like last week the giant being you know the big guy of course has got to be there also because he might have a match with triple h later tonight nonetheless shane mcmahon takes the mic and he goes mm, i bet you all thought you were rid of me I bet you all thought that after last week, after I proved my point, that I would have no reason to come back to Raw. But no, no ladies and gentlemen, I'm here, and I'm not going anywhere. Mick Foley? He's been taken care of. My dad? Well, he's no longer a factor. In a matter of two days, WCW took out the two head figures of the WWF. As we head into the last and final WrestleMania, oh, whatever, as we head into the last and final WrestleMania, it shouldn't have sounded like that. Nonetheless, and after tonight, when my boys, Booker T and the WWF Tag Team Champions, the Steiner Brothers, take out the WWF Champion along with his baby brother and the so-called Great One, after tonight, WWE, WWF will be left with no one. My dead old dad... We'll have to throw in the towel early under a mercy rule. Hate to play spoiler, but WCW wins and the WWF loses. Oh, wait, what the hell? Oh, wait, that's why. I, I figured that those dots meant that I had to go to my notepad. Before he can get off the word loses, though, that's when Triple H's music hits and out comes the game. Interrupting Shane McMahon as he makes his way towards the ring. Once in the ring, the WCW stars go after him, but uh, Shane calls them off pretty quickly. And he goes, boys, chill out. Hunter's family, and he's made it clear many times by now that he's not a friend or a foe. So, um, why are you exactly out here, Vin? And then that's when uh, Triple H takes the mic, and he goes, family? Like that word means anything to you. And you're right about one thing, Shane. I'm not your damn friend. But I may be your foe. Because you know what I spent the past week doing while you took control over Monday Night Raw? I sat down and I comforted your sister, my wife, while she shed tears in the sight of her limp father's body. I stood there and was a shoulder to cry on for your mother, my mother-in-law, as she sobbed away. She begged me to end this war that was tearing her family apart. So why am I here? Well, I think it's pretty obvious, Shane. I'm here to end this war once and for all. 
And uh, Shane, of course, you know, kind of smug and like, all right, whatever. But he doesn't see this coming because Triple H lands a stiff right right across the jaw of Shane McMahon, taking him down. And uh, Booker T immediately goes to check on Shane while the Steiners and Giant rush after Triple H. But Triple H gets out of the ring, avoiding any harm done to him. And then, uh, you know, the Steiners go and check on Shane as well. And that's when the Giant picks up the microphone and he goes, You think you're tough, Triple H? You think you're big? Hit someone when they're not paying attention? Well, if you're so big and tough, then why don't you meet me in the ring tonight and I'll squish you like the bug that you are. And uh, Triple H just, you know, probably just nods, doesn't even say anything while, you know, JR and King just put over like, what the hell's gotten into Triple H? I mean, Triple H for all these past couple of months, he said he doesn't want anything to do with the war. And now Vince McMahon's in the hospital, his, his wife, his mother-in-law distraught, and Triple H steps up to be the man of the house pretty much, so... Triple H, as uh, I just said in my my poor JR impersonation, is uh, stepping up pretty much to be the the family man. You know, Shane McMahon's pretty much trying to tear the family apart. Vince is down, and uh, I guess Triple H is doing uh, what we would call his best for business, and is te- stepping up to uh, take down Shane McMahon and the rest of WCW. Uh, we also had a couple of. Uh, Backstage things here, mostly uh, mentor psychology, or not mentor psychology, mentor and uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Protege uh, stuff. Vince McMahon, us, passing along to the children, our spawns, Shane and Stephanie. We pass psycho- psychology along to Shane McMahon, Mike along to Stephanie, and speaking of microphone, Taker pass along Mike to uh, Mark Jindrak, just making him even more of a promising uh, superstar. Doesn't Triple H's face turn? I thought uh, Triple H was supposed to start teasing a face turn. Did I forget to do that? Or maybe it just doesn't show up. Sometimes these things don't show up in the road agent reports, which confuses the hell out of me. Nonetheless, Shane McMahon improvised well throughout the segment. Giant was uh, superb with working out a script. He had the crowd in the palm of his hands, even though he had like a handful of lines. And uh, Triple H clearly enjoyed his freedom going off script. So thank you, gentlemen. Jerry Lawler pretty weak, which is unfortunate. Got the crowd off to a strong start. Got the crowd hot. Giant came across well. No worker improvements, though, as uh, we get some hype for our main events here tonight. First off, of course, the match that was just confirmed, Triple H versus the Giant, which has got a solid 80. And then our main event of the night, which gets a 77, solid B, uh, the six-man tag team match, which will see The Rock teaming up with the Brothers of Destruction to take on Booker T and the Steiner Brothers. We then jump to a solid 80B, probably after a commercial break. The WCW Canadian champion, Lance Storm's music hits, and out he comes. A replay plays from last week showing his beatdown on Edge. Once in the ring, Lance Storm takes the mic and he goes, If I can have everyone's attention, I'd like to address last week. Since no one has left me alone since, why did I attack Edge? And my answer to that question is quite simple. You see, Edge is the United States champion. Edge is also from Canada. Now I've been going on for months proving to everyone that Canada is better than the entire nation of Europe. That Canada is better than Mexico. And most importantly of all, that Canada is better than the USA. And yet... Yet you fat Americans still think that you not only hold superiority over Canada, but over the whole world. So while Edge, the Canadian boy from Toronto, Ontario, who's living the American dream, reigns proud as the champion of America, I, Lance Storm, am living the Canadian dream. The dream where I end the stereotype that has plagued Canadians for so long. Got to pull up our handy dandy notepad. We are not jokes, which is why starting tonight, I'm issuing an open challenge to any proud American wrestlers back there. I'm a fighting champion who fights for his country. And then Lance Storm just lays the Canadian championship onto the canvas and he says, so it's put up or shut up. If you think you can shut me up and take this belt from me, then step up. And then that's when Bradshaw's music hits the former tag team champion, former 
hardcore champion. Out he comes with the mic in his hand. Very patriotic superstar. And he says, now looky here, Storm. That's a very bad <laughs> Bradshaw. From one patriot to another, I respect the hell out of you for standing up for your country. But you just made one big ass mistake because you ain't just got any American taking you on tonight. You got one badass semi-drunk cowboy who's going to take your damn head off, boy. And then Bradshaw tosses the mic down and he makes a beeline towards the ring while Storm probably just, you know, is doing the whole bring it uh, hand motion. And uh, we get an impromptu Canadian Championship match here between Bradshaw and Lance Storm, which will be next. Uh, got the crowd hot. The feud for Storm and Edge moved along. And the match itself gets a solid 78, solid B rating here. Decent matchup. Lance Storm going over Bradshaw in 9 minutes, 32 seconds with underhanded tactics. I'd like to imagine uh, maybe Bradshaw goes for a clothesline from hell. Lance Storm ducks it and uses his momentum against him, rolls him up for a quick cradle or something, grabs the, I don't know, boxers because he wears jeans, so he can't really say tights. And then 1, 2, 3, picks up the victory, making his 18th defense of the Canadian Championship. Announcing help this matchup here. Bradshaw had an in-ring performance of a 74. Lance Storm with a 78. No worker improvements though. As we jump into an 84 rated B plus angle here. Match is over. And while Bradshaw is arguing with the referee over the ending. Pretty much saying, hey come on man. He grabbed my, my boxers. Whatever. Uh, Storm takes advantage of this moment. And hits Bradshaw from behind with the Canadian Championship. And then gets on top of him and starts just repeatedly, you know, beating down on him, raining down punches on the Bradshaw before locking him into the sharpshooter and refusing to let go as the referee is trying to pull him off. Lance Storm is just screaming, you know, at the top of his lungs. And that's when you think you know me, know me. Rob Zombie plays over the, you know, big speakers, whatever you want to call them, the loudspeakers. And uh, out comes the United States champion, Edge, who makes a beeline towards the ring, slides into the ring and goes, Right after Lance Storm. Lance Storm lets go of the hold, going right after Edge once he's in the ring. But Edge sweeps him off his feet and uh, manages to get on top of Lance Storm and land a few punches onto the Canadian champion until Lance Storm pulls himself, or, you know, pushes Edge off of him and then pulls himself out of the ring, retreating from the ring while uh, Edge just pretty much dares him to get back in the ring while holding up the United States Championship over him. So there you go. Very, uh, very good rate or well rated angle. I don't know what the hell is the right word for that. Very good doesn't sound good. Very well. Uh, a, a good rated angle? I don't know. This is a good angle, pretty much. Good stuff. 84B, that's great for, you know, a mid-card feud. Uh, Bradshaw, or excuse me, what am I saying Bradshaw for? Performance of Edge was good. Bradshaw was just there, and it moved along with the story as well. We then jump to a 79 solid B rating, B rated angle. As we go backstage, Vitamin C, they are walking, they're joking around, just having a laugh. When they run into Head Chop, who are meditating in the middle of the hallway, and then Christian's like, get a load of these guys, Chris. Jericho, annoyed by this, he's like, oh lord, you guys can't be serious. Hey, you two, I know you can hear me. You're blocking the hallway, you ass clowns, move! And he pushes like Snow, and uh, that makes Snow kind of break his meditation. He goes, hey man, what's your problem? My problem is that my buddy Chris and I are trying to get by, and he, you jackasses are here in the way, are, are trying to get back, I don't know, trying to get by, and you and Jackassy Chan here are in our way. And then uh, Snow, uh, taking it back, he goes, Fu and I are just meditating, you know, we're meditating here for a reason. This spot right here is the most balanced spot in the entire build. And then that's when Christian interrupts him before he can finish his sentence, and he goes, look, we don't give a damn. So if you and Kung Fu Naki don't move out of our way, we'll move you ourselves. And then uh, Al Snow's like, oh, uh, I wouldn't do that. And then Christian goes to push Funaki out of the way, but Funaki springs up and he hits a karate chop right on the Christian's head, taking him back, making him fall backwards. And then Christian, you know, or, excuse me, not Christian, Jericho holding Christian back from going after him. He goes, all right, wise guys, you want to fight? You've got it. Meditate all you want, because next... You two are about to get your daily dose of vitamin C. Come on, Christian. And then uh, Jericho walks away as uh, this will lead into a tag team match that's going to be taking place next. I needed time to fill and I needed like one more match. I was like, hey, I haven't used Jericho and Christian in a minute. Let's get them on this show. 
So uh, Jericho is getting better at his gimmick. Funaki getting better at his gimmick as well. Jericho was fantastic. Funaki was underwhelming. I disagree. Funaki is amazing. All right. So what do we got here? The match itself gets an 82 solid B rating here. That's really good for a head chop. They're so good. I love head chop. Good wrestling. Decent reaction from the crowd. Vitamin C goes over head chop in 7 minutes, 58 seconds after Christian defeats Al Snow at the end. Prettier. prettier. Uh, Chris Jericho getting better at his gimmick. Jericho and Christian, of course, have excellent chemistry. JR and J Jerry Lawler have, you know, work extremely well with each other. Uh, Jericho stood out as being good. Funaki with an in-ring performance of a 59. Al Snow with a 66. Christian with a 93. And Jericho with the good God Almighty 100. Hell yes, Chris Jericho. Give me one moment, guys. Let me respond to this message. Got a buddy coming over later tonight, so. All right. Worker improvements. Uh, Jericho improving in performance. And then we move on to a 90 rated solid A backstage angle as uh, Michael Cole with Triple H. He says, uh, ladies and gentlemen, joining me at this time, the game, Triple H. Triple H, tonight you face the Giant and uh, Triple H just kind of cuts him off. He goes, yeah, and I don't give a damn about the Giant. Shane, I meant what I said earlier. I'm going to end this war, and I'm not wasting any times on guy on time on guys like Giant. If you step in my way, I'll kick your ass. But as far as I'm concerned, there are four men on my list. Shane, you're one of them. The other three? Well, that's three turncoat jackasses that turn took out your took out your father. For some reason, I thought that said R. I was like, why did I write R? Scott Hall. Kevin Nash and Hollywood Hulk Hogan. The N.W.O. And since the N.W.O. doesn't want to show their face, and honestly, I don't blame them. But it doesn't matter. I will get my hands on all three of you, and I will end all three of you. And uh, Triple H just walks off, and uh, he starts the storyline. You guys might see it here. Triple H versus the N.W.O., Triple H, he's going to end this war, and he's going after He doesn't... When I say Triple H is going to end this war, I don't mean like, oh, I'm taking the lead and I'm I'm going. But, you know, Triple H, he's going after the guys who took out his father-in-law. He's going after the guys who made his wife cry. You know, that to me, that's, that, that's kind of Triple H's full gimmick right here is Stephanie McMahon, you know, like his wife. So he's going after the guys that, that hurt his daughter I mean Stephanie's been playing this big game of oh you know it doesn't matter uh, we're, we're here for the war but that's still her father and seeing her father maybe not limp like oh he's really dead but I, I'd like to imagine that the story here is he's like in a coma or something so um, Triple H seeing his wife like that and then hearing his, his mother-in-law say end this war he's gonna end the war and he, he's going after you know the head of the snake Shane McMahon and the snake's you know three wise men or whatever you want to call them the NWO. So uh, Triple H came across well. Good stuff, good stuff. A3 B-plus rating as we get go to a backstage angle here between Test, Albert, and Trish. Uh, Test and Albert are arguing over their recent losses and, of course, you know, protecting Trish. Albert starts off by saying, Look, man, I don't know where your head's at, but it's not in the game. We had our shot to get our titles back. But when I need you, you're nowhere to be found. And now those damn Dudleys get our shot. And then Tess responds by saying, Look, man, I'm sorry. But Scott was going after Trish. And yeah, and I know. You said that. But Trish, she's made it pretty clear that she can handle herself. She doesn't need me or you protecting her. And uh, Tess is like, I've got no doubt that Trish can handle her own against a loon like Daphne. But Scott Steiner? And then that's when Trish steps in and says, I'm not afraid of Scott Steiner. Daphne... Or anyone that stands in my way. I'm sick of everyone looking at me like I'm some fragile porcelain doll. And you don't help matters by jumping in the second you think I'm in danger. I'm not a princess at the end of the castle. I'm Trish Stratus, the best woman on this roster. And tonight, everyone finds that out when I take out Miss Jacqueline tonight. And uh, that uh, moves along the storyline. 
as uh, we jump forward. I don't believe we're jumping into that match. No, we got our Triple H versus Giant matchup. Solid 82 B rating here. Exceptional match. Triple H goes over the Giant in 13 minutes, 27 seconds with the pedigree. Giant had an 88 in ring performance and Triple H with a 95. Good God. Good job, Triple H. Giant is improving in technical as well. 94 solid A rating here as Jonathan Coachman is with Edge. And he says, uh, Jonathan Coachman here and joining me now is the WCW United States Champion, Edge. Edge, earlier we heard Lance Storm's reason as to why he attacked you last week. Your response? And uh, that's when Edge responds by saying, look, if Sir Lancelot wants a title shot, all he had to do was ask. But Stormy, don't, but Stormy, don't make this about country pride. Because while you you parade yourself around as a great Canadian, everyone else in the world just thinks you're a stealthish jackass. But before he can finish what he's saying, it's the, the night of interruptions. Lance Storm comes in and he jumps in from off screen, jumps Edge, and immediately they go into a backstage brawl that has to be pulled apart and separated by a bunch of backstage workers. 94 solid A. This feud is going to be great. Like, I can't imagine this match at WrestleMania between these two. They are killing it right now. Every angle with them just gets better and better. We jump into the Trish Stratus versus Jacqueline match. To my surprise, these two have never fight each other, fought each other. 59, solid C rating here. Trish Stratus goes over Jacqueline in 8 minutes, 27 seconds with Stratus Faction. Uh, Trish had an in-ring performance of a 68. Jacqueline with a 52. Golly, a 68 for Trish. That's great. Jackie's also improving in performance. 68 C plus for the uh, angle afterwards. Match is over. Trish is celebrating the ring, and that's when she is jumped from behind by the WWF Women's Champion, Daphne. Daphne screams and laughs at Trish as she picks her up by her hair. Trish fights out of the hold, and they, she begins to fight back. And uh, for a moment, it looks like Trish is going to take out the Women's Champion until Daphne sprays her with mist. And um, pretty much while Trish is just rolling in the ring, covering her eyes, trying to get the mist out, um, Daphne just hovers over her, standing over her pretty much, holding the title, mocking her and all that, wiping her own eyes, just laughing at her and whatnot. And no TNA because Trish wanted to be left alone, so they didn't come out to help her. This is Trish's battle. Unfortunately, it did lose heat to the feud, but I'm sure we can gain that back with like a promo or whatnot. 88 B plus for our backstage angle between the BOD and The Rock. Backstage in the locker room, the Brothers of Destruction are uh, warming up when The Rock walks in and he goes, Gentlemen, The Rock is back and The Rock only has one question for you two. Are you ready? Because you can bet The Rock's perfect round ass that he's ready. Tonight, the Great One teams with the Dead Ones to go three on three with the so-called WCW stars, Whoopi T and the Frankenstein Brothers. And The Rock's got to say, The Rock likes our chances. I mean, last week, The Rock already whooped Scott Steiner's muscly ass. So here's what The Rock has planned for the night. But before Rock can get off his plan, that's when The Undertaker interrupts him. Again, night of interruptions. And he goes, all right, I'm going <clears> to <throat> I'm gonna cut you there because it looks like you put a lot of planning to, in this tag match tonight. But Rock, you've been wasting your time. You might need a strategy, but for me and little brother, our game plan is simple. Go out there and beat some ass. We'll see you out there. And I'd imagine, you know, slaps him on the chest as he walks by, and uh, Kane walks by too, leaving The Rock alone in the locker room. Rock just kind of stands there, and he goes, I mean, that was what The Rock's plan was anyway. But what, what the hell? Hey, wait up, you undead jabronis. Let The Rock catch up. And uh, there you go. Just a quick little fun segment, hyping up the, the six-man tag match, where, uh, you know, just some classic little promos we used to get back in the day. Get a little bit of humor in into a little dire situation. Rock was fantastic. Taker was excellent. Kane looked good. Jerry Lawler was weak. What can you do? We jump into our main event of the night. 81 solid B. Uh, you know, you would kind of want better. I'm not going to lie. With every other getting kind of, you know, match getting a B here with only the women's match not. You'd kind of want these guys to probably get a B plus, maybe even an A but uh, solid 81B, I guess, isn't too bad. In an exceptional matchup, though, Rock and the Brothers of Destruction go over Booker T and the Steiner Brothers in 15 minutes, 58 seconds after Kane defeats Rick Steiner with a choke slam. Uh, apparently not enough selling shown. I blame the Steiners and probably Kane and Taker, to be honest. Rock and Booker know how to sell, I'd say. 
Maybe Brock knows how to oversell. Kane with an in-ring performance of an 89. The Undertaker with a 98. The Rock with a 99. Rick Steiner with an 81. So he was the weakest, but that's not too bad, to be honest. Scott Steiner with a 92. He did better than Booker T, who got a 90. And the Rock and Shane McMahon storyline advanced as well. Rock is improving in performance. And we close out the night with, you know, everyone celebrating. I didn't really include Kane and uh, Rock in this, but everyone, you know, they're celebrating. They just won. And uh, you just kind of, the camera pans onto the, the, you know, the rafters. And there you see the WCW champion once again, who I guess has been there this entire time, standing in the rafters, just watching the match, looking at the Undertaker, staring at him, maybe pointing his baseball bat while the dead man just looks back up at him. So we get a nice little stare down between them and, I will go ahead and spoil one thing for Nitro for you guys, even though they're not. no one can be like, oh, Sting's going to talk this week on Nitro. Sting is going to talk this week on Nitro. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be you know, Sting's first like addressing of The Undertaker. So that's something to look forward to for Nitro. It did lose heat, but I imagine Sting's promo is going to gain that heat back up. 84 B-plus rating for uh, this show. Apparently there wasn't enough attractive women, which... Ah, damn, that's unfortunate. I thought Trish Stratus would uh, help that out, but what can you do? That's a shame. Doesn't help that Stephanie wasn't, you know, on Triple H as the, the manager, so whatever. 84 B-plus rating, no improve, you know, popularity boost, but um, mostly probably because of the women thing. Um, what can you do? I'm, I'm not really worried about that. Damn perverts, always ruining our damn shows, guys. What can you do? Nonetheless, though, that is going to be the end of this episode of Monday Night Raw. I do hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, do me a favor. Leave me a comment. Like, subscribe if you have not already. And don't forget to share this video with your friends, your Facebooks, your Twitters, your Instagrams. I don't give a damn. All the social media accounts out there. If you've got one, share it to it and uh, help your boy out. In fact, if you feel like you've got a boy out there, maybe even a gal. I don't know. Let's not judge. It could be a uh, gender fluid. Whatever that shit is. <laughs> God, I'm going to get hated on one day for this stuff. Um, if you got a buddy out there you feel who would also enjoy my content, please give them a, a, you know, a share as well. And uh, help your boy out. Maybe gain some new, uh, new subscribers in here. Make the family a little bit bigger. Speaking of helping people out, allow me to help out some of my friends here. We've got, uh, you know, down in the description down below, you can always check it out. A bunch of my buddies. I recommend checking out my man, Zach. He's uh, doing his thing on Twitch right now. He's out streaming every day so he's very you know consistent uh my buddy raging yoshi he just recently started a new let's play off oh, of the life of me i can never remember the name of it it's such a long odd name for a game but um yeah and uh you also you got my boy senor conqueso retro gizmo uh Alyssa m4 people like that they're maybe not as active but they're still doing their thing you know check them out as well and uh, that's about it. My name's been OMGWTF, LOFTWBRB, and I will see you guys for Nitro. So until then, have yourselves a great day.